What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So I was very surprised at how heavily requested this video was. I have 40 bottles. They're all right here. Some you can't even see in the shot. 40 bottles from Mensera. I recently revamped my top in my collection. I couldn't quite do a 10. I had to do 15. So I did 15. And boy, was it rapid fire. Where's Oud Lemon Mint? Where's Silver Blue? I thought you gave this a 9. What about this one? So I said, all right. I can rank them all from my least favorite to my favorite. You guys got to show up for me. It's going to be a long video, and this is going to be a long video. And there seems to be a certain level of excitement from several people. So I appreciate that. So I'm going to try to keep, I mean, this is a longer intro than it should be. This is going to be a long video. So I'm going to try to keep each one of these as brief as I can while still getting my, you know, summary of my thoughts of each out. But here are all 40 of my bottles. Not all the Mancera's I've tried or had decants of or samples or anything. I've tried many more than the 40. But these are the 40 I own bottles of. Ranked from my least favorite to my favorite. Stay tuned. So let's start with my least favorite being Wild Cherry, a recent acquisition. It smells like cherry cough syrup. It's not the most endearing fragrance. It's not terrible, but it's far from being all that good. I haven't wanted to revisit it since I got it. I did a first impressions on it, and it just didn't captivate me. It does get better as it dries, but I can't, it's hard to get past that Robitussin opening. It smells like a cherry cough syrup. It really does. So not one that I encourage anyone checking out. Far from a safe blind buy if you like cherry fragrances. Literally my least favorite cherry fragrance of the ones I own. Don't want a ton, but I mean, it can't hold a candle to things like um, the cherry note that's in Guerlain Lome Ideal Eau de Parfum, or most notably French Defense from Mind Games. Night and day difference in cherry fragrances. But number 40, my least favorite, is Wild Cherry. Number 39, I actually quite appreciate this fragrance. I find it to be the base for a few others here. This is Mancera's The Oud. Now, this is a very biblical, pungent, oud rose type of fragrance. And I've actually gotten a compliment wearing this fragrance. It blew my mind. It actually is a very good fragrance. If you want one of the more uh, challenging experiences of oud, or whatever Pierre Montal uses as far as oud oils, that would be this. I even smell this as the base of something like Black, Black Prestigium, which is like in my top five from the house. We'll get to that way later from now. But this is not something that I wholeheartedly recommend to people, but... I sure do appreciate it if I want a heavy oud, just something different. It is really good. It's just the wearability is so low for me. That's what gets it. At number 39, it's a monster too. Number 38, this is one of the better vanilla white florals I've ever smelled. My wife actually has her own bottle. This is Black Vanilla. It's a very feminine opening, very girly with the white peach, heavy jasmine. When you start to settle down a few minutes later, let's call it 20, 30 minutes into the fragrance's life, that's when the black currant starts to really come in and the creamy, slightly powdery vanilla takes over. It's not quite as feminine at that point. This is a nuclear performer. It's in the same line as Red Tobacco. I don't have many fragrances from that line outside of the, the two red tobaccos and this, but this is a nuclear fragrance, I gotta say. So be mindful. It's not the best option for guys, but confident men can sure pull this one off. It's been a long time since I've worn it personally, but I do have an appreciation for it. It is one of the more approachable, heavily feminine leaning fragrances for me in my collection. At number 38, we have Black Vanilla. 37, the one I have the least experience with because it's literally the newest one to my collection, bought by mistake, was Mancera's Oud Line. So Oud Line, I was actually buying Black Prestigium from a seller on eBay uh, for part of a member stream, the member stream with the giveaway, and he accidentally sent me this in the Black Prestigium box. So I was like, instead of going through the return process, I'll just buy this and please send Black Precision, and it all got sorted out. He did that, so I just I never had any plans on buying this. I've only sprayed it the one time in a live stream. It's not a bad fragrance. This is a bit more of a slightly heavier, denser, warm wood type of oud smell. It's not the same type of oud oil that I find in the oud. I feel like they're different oud fragrances overall. There's a freshness to it, a little bit of fruits. Of course, there's some rose here. This is more rose dominant than something like Mancera the oud. Not bad at all. I actually think it's quite nice. Hell, it's even ranked above the one I was referring to that's more oud dominant. Not bad. I just have a very limited experience with it, but at number 37, Mancera's Oud Line. 
Moving into 36, this one surprised me at how much the Nigerian giant Omos and George Atkinson, the fragrance apprentice, loved this fragrance, especially on test strip. I used it in a blind smelling rate with them. This is deep forest. Now, you gotta like the earthy coniferous greens. And I do enjoy it, but I don't love it. I'm not in love with this fragrance. Um, wearability is on the lower end for me. Now, I do like earthier, darker fragrances these days, more dirty, earthy stuff. And there is something to appreciate about this. It has a slight astringent funkiness, almost castorium-like type of smell with uh, conifers, that pine cone smell, earthy greens, woods, a little dirty. Like I said, there's something to appreciate here. It just doesn't have a high level of wearability for me. You'll notice in my rankings, its level of wearability is what really captivates me the most. How often am I going to want to reach for this? How does it suit my lifestyle? And this one, lower tier when it comes to suiting my everyday lifestyle. But it is isn't a fragrance worth appreciating and worth experiencing. If you like earthy greens, it's worth checking out. The Deep Forest. Into 35. Um, I don't love it. I don't hate it. I very much like it. It's one of the better coffee, sweet coffee fragrances I have. Uh, I used to have a decant of it. I finally got around to getting a bottle not that long ago. It is Mancera's Oud Cafe. Uh, it's a very sweet fragrance. It's short-lived coffee, kind of like how Montal, the sister brand to Mancera, um, Intense Cafe is short-lived coffee. It's mainly a rose fragrance. This is mainly a sweet cream vanilla type of fragrance where you get coffee early on. And that tends to fade, a little bit of woody nuance to it. Obviously, it's got some oud in, in it. It's more of a, a drier oud, uh, warm wood type of thing, almost pencil shaving like. Another one, great performer, as most of these are. Uh, if you like sweet coffee fragrances that are lighter on the coffee, you might want to look into this one. And that's Mancera's Oud Cafe. Number 34, shame on me. I haven't spent a lot of time with it. And spring's kind of the ideal time to wear Fig Ecstasy. One of the few 60 ml bottles that I have, this was a recommendation. I want to say Giancarlo Burton, longtime channel supporter and channel member. I want to say this was a recommendation from him. Uh, slightly woodsy type of fig. Uh, there's a little bit of a fresh citrus feel to it. There's some green tones as well. It is a good fragrance. It is a very good fragrance, actually. I just haven't wore it much. Got it not that long ago. I haven't had it for a really long time. I'm always getting new fragrances in. Uh, but I do appreciate the scent profile. It is one of the better fig fragrances I've smelled. Definitely upper echelon when you compare it to a lot of like designer level figs. I mean, this is much better than most of those. Uh, but as far as some of the niche fig fragrances I have, I wouldn't call it my favorite, the best one, if you will. But it's up there. I just need to spend more time with it is the God's honest truth. It's Fig Ecstasy. Moving into number 33, kind of smells like roasting marshmallows out at a bonfire. This is Oud Vanille. Nice like charred wood smell, powdery vanilla, a little on the smoky side. I reviewed this one like four years ago. I did an individual review on it. It is beautiful. It's such a challenge, especially now that we're starting to get into closer to the mid-level, like the lower tier mid-level of my rating. You know, where I rank them, it's, it's difficult. It's all a crapshoot. At this point, any one of them can be interchanged from here all the way to number 16. They can all kind of swap spots with one another. Because this really is a beautiful fragrance. It's, it, when I say roasting marshmallows by a bonfire, I don't mean it doesn't smell like by the fireplace from Mason Margella. It's its own thing. But that fluffy, creamy, powdery vanilla smell with this kind of charred, almost dry rotted like lighting a pallet on fire at a bonfire with some leaves to get it going that kind of smell beautiful stuff beautiful stuff it's a great fragrance again it's Mancera's Oud Vanille number 32 is definitely not for everyone but it was is certainly for me my friend Hillary shout out to Hillary if you happen to see this I was selling some of her fragrances uh, in one of she was doing some spring cleaning last year in one of our uh group chats and this came up and I used to have a decant this is oud black candy it's a licorice fragrance sweet notes powdery black licorice dominant not for everybody wife's not a fan I love it it's so unique I like licorice in a fragrance and this is black licorice clear as day and again it's in the it's a very powdery licorice fragrance with some other like fruity sweet notes almost candy like to go with licorice what is indeed a candy it's different. It's not for everybody, and that's, I think that's what intrigues me so much about this one. Again, it wasn't a blind buy. It was one that I had a decant of in the past, and I was like, this is a unique fragrance. One day, 
I need to get a bottle. And the right situation popped up. Hillary was selling it for a great price. And I bought a partial that, not so partial, pretty full bottle. Um, shout outs to Hillary for the great deal. Great friend hooking up a great deal, gotta say. So we're talking Oud Black Candy. Moving into 31. Now, this is one I did a review on many years ago. I got this from Steve over at Kingdom Fragrance. Um, very similar to Precious Oud. If you remove the boozy note, you get crazy for oud. It has that tiramisu sweetness with a lot of you know dense woody oud. Not all that funky. There's some other notes going on, but that's the main thing. It's got this dessert cake-like smell from the tiramisu note. It's a very sweet gourmand-like oud fragrance. Good stuff. It's quite good. Great performer too. Better in the cooler weather. Not one I would recommend in the warm weather. But there's so many great offerings from Pierre Montal and then so many redundant redundant offerings from him. Like I said, this is the same fragrance as Precious Oud if you remove the boozy note. You're left with crazy for Oud. So high level redundance. It's interesting waters to navigate, but stuff like this flies under the radar because of it. Crazy Oud at 31. This was recommended and requested. I still haven't done a full review on it. I've spent a little bit of time with it, but Saharian Wind, Saharian Wind, Saharian Wind, however you say it. A lot of people want to relate this one to like Isola Blue and Terre d'Hermes. I get more of a Terre d'Hermes tie-in than I do Isola Blue because this is a heavier, denser, spicier kind of fragrance. Heavy on the woods. I find uh, there's a nice citrus to this though. This is a really good fragrance. Highly versatile, super masculine. I find it to be anyways. Great daily wear for somebody that's not in the hottest of climates. This is signature scent while setting you apart type of stuff. That's kind of how I would view it. Performance is great. It's not obnoxiously overwhelming beast, but it is very strong. Be mindful of sprays. And like I said, I think it's high level versatility, especially in a professional setting. Then we're talking Saharian wind. 29, an underdog fragrance. This is some really good stuff. Beautiful violet dominant fragrance. This is Oud Blue Notes. Love the bottle, always have. Did a full review on this one not that long ago. This is the best fragrance from Mancera that you never heard of, was I believe how I titled it, because not everybody had ever given it a shot. Again, there's a sea of fragrances from Pierre Montal. They fly under the radar. This one, nice and fruity. A lot of fruity notes at the top. Powdery, uh, dries into more of a creamy, musky, violet dominant type of fragrance as it settles. Great performance. I would say semi-casual, semi-formal, because like it can you can wear it casually. It doesn't come across as too dressy of a fragrance, but it dresses up just as easily. Now I'm not gonna I don't mean that as in it's super versatile, because it's you know very select number of people that are gonna like this type of scent profile because it's very powdery violet dominant. That is the core of this fragrance, it's the main thing you're gonna get from it. Really not a whole lot of oud, not a ton of blue notes either. It's an interesting name. But it is a fruity floral fragrance that's creamy and musky at the same time that doesn't lean super feminine. At least not to me. Again, that's Mancera's Oud Blue Notes. Moving into 28, it's one of the most regal, classy smelling vanillas I've ever got my nose on. It's even in the name with Royal Vanilla. I got this for a steal during the holiday season. I paid like 44 bucks. It was a you know a tester presentation. So it came in the white tester box, but I don't care as long as they have a cap. Uh, this is a very rich, thick and creamy type of vanilla. Thick florals, rose, stuff like that. Not for everybody, but man, this is one of the more unique vanillas from them. They have loads of oud fragrances, they have loads of floral fragrances, and they have loads of vanilla dominant fragrances in this house. And this one in particular, I don't think gets the kind of shine it deserves because it's easily one of the best, if not the best vanilla dominant fragrance. I mean, one of for sure, uh, as far as vanilla dominant fragrances from the house, crazy nuclear performance on my skin too. Like I said, kind of a classy vanilla, has some dark richness, thick jammy florals. It's good stuff, it's royal vanilla. Moving into 27, do you like lemon bars? Then you'll like fabulous yuzu. Cause that's what it smells like. I know it says yuzu, but it smells like lemon bars. The vanilla is cake-like with the other nuances here. And the lemon and yuzu combo at the top, it straight up smells like lemon bars. Not as good for the high heat summer as you may think, but summer evenings or somebody that likes a tasty fragrance in the warmer weather. It is good stuff. Gotta say it's worth checking out. Not as good as I anticipated it to be when I jumped on it blindly. Not too long after it came out. It was a pretty new release when I grabbed it. But it is good stuff and it's already flying under the radar. 
I guess because, uh, I don't know, maybe some were underwhelmed when they got it. I, I don't know what the case is. But Fabulous Yuzu, if you like lemon bars, you'll like this. Number 26, the only reason it's not higher, I believe, is because I have such limited experience with it. I just got it recently. I've only worn it one time. It's one of the new releases. It's Black Noir. This is soft, powdery black leather, as the name would indicate, having black in it. This is so good. I had a sample of it first. I, I apologize. I forgot who sent me the decant, but I was able to sample it first, and I was like, yeah, I got to get a bottle. Then not too long after, Fragrance Buy happened to stock it. Man, that is good. It's a little on the sweet side, but not too sweet. It's powdery. And I want to say it's not too powdery, but it's, it's, it's kind of powdery. With a nice black leather accord, it's beautiful. Powdery leather, the most simple way to come across with some sweetness. Most simple way for me to explain it. It's not for everybody, but it is sure for me. And it's worth a sample, especially if you like powdery. It's Black Noir. Moving into 25, some people are going to call this blasphemy that it's ranked too low for them. But I like what I like, and I do like Instant Crush quite a bit. I think it's a beautiful, sweeter, more floral dominant twist on Baccarat Rouge 540 that is an absurd performer. This is such a stout fragrance. Be mindful of the sprays with this one. Beautiful amber wood, loaded with amber wood, burnt sugar sweetness from Baccarat Rouge, and a lot of jasmine. This is a much more floral sweet twist on Baccarat Rouge 540. And it's that simple. That's my thoughts on it. That's how it smells to me. If that sounds good, you might want to get your nose on it. It's instant crush. Moving into 24. I quite enjoy this one. It's one of the better leather fragrances from the house that I've discovered randomly. I just bought it on a whim. I actually wore it to the Undertaker's One Dead Man show on Royal Rumble weekend a few months ago. This is wild leather. It's definitely an animalic rough and tumble leather on the smoky side. Nice woody dominance. Perfect to wear to Mark Calloway, the, under the Undertaker. For you wrestling fans. It just seemed like the right fragrance for the setting. And I'm not going to say it was or wasn't, but I sure enjoyed wearing it. Performance is great. Um, and if you like leather fragrances, leather dominant accords, I would highly encourage checking this one out. Because as far as I know, it doesn't get any love. It's rough and tumble and smoky. It's good stuff. With some spice, of course. It's wild leather. Number 23 is very, very impressive. Nice, spicy, woody fragrance. This is Sand Oud. This stuff is impressive. I want to say I gave it like a 9 out of 10 the first time I smelled it. God, this is so impressive. Easily one of their best fragrances. The wearability is more to the fall and winter for me because it is a heavier, um, darker spice is kind of how it comes across on my skin. But it's definitely worth checking out. This is another one that's kind of under the radar from the house. Doesn't really get a lot of love. Shout outs to my man Robert from Fragrance Journey 01. First time I ever heard anybody speak on this was years ago. I heard him speak on it. And it always had my intrigue. And I finally got around to getting it. And I mean, it's like middle of the pack for me. We're talking sand, dude. Moving into 22, one of the most versatile everyday wares that you would think is strictly for the summertime. But Melody of the Sun, nice woody dominance, citrus fresh. I get a lot of the woody backbone to this. It's like a, a woody aquatic aromatic in some ways because it is a little aquatic, a lot of citrus, a little bit of fruitiness, not too sweet, more on the citrus than the fruits. Man, that just smells so good. So easy to wear, not overwhelmed with florals like a lot of their fresh fragrances can be dominant with rose or white florals and such. Little bit of floral here, but not heavy floral here like some of the other ones. This would be a great starting point for a lot of people wanting to dip their toe into the house but don't want to go after Sidrap Boise or Aqua Wood. I would suggest checking out Melody of the Sun. 21, the sunscreen fragrance. I got this one recently. I had been wanting to get it. If you like fragrances like Sole Blanc and Eau de Sole Blanc from Tom Ford, for example, you'll probably like Holidays, Coconut, Citrus, Aquatic, Smells of sunscreen, such a beach day. I mean, it's in the name, holidays. It's for vacations, and I would say beach vacations. Oh, the cocoa butter sunscreen smell. Look, that's a turnoff for some people. I get it. I used to not like that in fragrances. Now, give me all the sunscreen smelling fragrances. I love it. It fits the vibe. I live at the beach. I'm a three minute drive from feet in the sand by a pier on Dog Beach. It's great. I love going to Dog Beach. Um, it's phenomenal. 
And you would say, well, damn, why is it not higher? I have a ton of good ones. I re Pierre Montal is one of my favorite perfumers, as it turns out, because I bought a vast amount of his work, and I had been wanting to get this one. It's similar to other things, like I mentioned, but with Mancera's little twist. Great performer, too, if you want a great sunscreen fragrance. Check out Holidays. Number 20, one of their newer releases from last year that people were surprised to not see in the top 50 is Cosmic Pepper. Basically, a more pepper-dominant twist on Chanel Lorum Sport. Hyper-versatile, super easy to like, co high compliment factor type of fragrance, really good performer without being a beast. High level versatility, just got hit a black pepper as soon as I sprayed it, there's black pepper, pink pepper. But also smells like that kind of orchid aquatic, floral, citric, Chanel Lorum Sport that's just so easy to like. Is it the same fragrance? No. Is it similar with its own thing going on? Yeah, and that's what makes it so good. One of the more versatile options. Great, great choice. It's nice when they, it's another one, not loaded with floral dominance, not full of oud, just full of smiles when you smell it. It's Cosmic Pepper. Moving into 19, the main fragrance, I had to hear it in the comments. I can't believe this didn't make it. I can't believe this didn't make it. What about this? I thought it was great. I can't believe you didn't put oud lemon mint in your top 15. At one time it was about 25 Manceras ago for me, <laughs> okay? So it is phenomenal. It does deserve all the love and the hype that it gets in the online fragrance community. It's a great fragrance, it's super unique. I would love to see them do an intense version of this next. They did intense Drapoise, they did intense Red Tobacco, they're beautiful. This is super popular for them. I would love to see this be the next intense flanker they do to see how they go with it. Creamy Lemon Oud Woods Almond, if I remember correctly, there's a little bit of almond in here. It just adds to the creaminess. Not all that minty, but creamy lemon. Man, if you like lemon. Oh, there it is. Oh, great performer. High compliment getter for a lot of people. Not real oud dominant. Even though oud's in the name, it's not a heavy, funky oud type of smell. Man, it is all that good. It is all that jam. I do love it for those of you that were wondering. I do love it. It's just... It's pretty heavy with the creaminess. It's a very thick, heavy wear for me. So in warmer climate, not always the most opportune setting and scenario and weather for this fragrance. But man, it is some of Pierre Montal's best work. I totally agree with you guys on that. And that's Oud Lemon Mint. Moving into 18. This is another one relatively new to the collection. Kind of blown away by it. Love the way the wood spice and caramel blend together with silver blue. And the funniest thing about this fragrance is it's not blue. The color scheme, the blue and silver, is gorgeous. But it has nothing to do with the scent profile. Like I said, it's a heavy wood, spice, caramel sweet fragrance. It's great. It's a phenomenal scent. Just nothing blue about it. It just doesn't, like, it doesn't make sense. But when you smell it, whew, me oh my a damn good fragrance definitely worth checking out not the safest blind buy in the world i mean none of these are but if you like caramel you might want to check this one out kind of like a uh, popular fico from nishane with caramel similar profile that woody spicy tone just not as fresh heavier darker and much sweeter we're talking about silver blue moving into 17 this is going to blow some of you some of your minds because it's intense flanker is so much more me. It's in the top three, four, technically. Three or four, depends on how you look at it. Because one had two fragrances, but we broke it down individually. So it's technically four now. But we're talking about red tobacco. And yes, my label rippled up from the bottle leaking many years ago. There was a time when this was my favorite tobacco fragrance. When it was top two from the house for me. I'll hardly ever wear this because when i want this profile i'm gonna just reach for the intense that's the honest to god's truth that's why it's so low some of you are mind blown right now it's my list it's the way i rank them i love it I, it's an all-time great it's one of the greatest tobacco fragrances ever created this dna is impressive it's pungent sweet smoky earthy tobacco oh very ambery just the right amount of spice. It's not all that spicy. 
very pungent. Crazy, crazy strong fragrance. Nuclear performer. Like I said, it's an all-time great, but its intense flanker speaks to me so much more that I don't know when the next time I'm going to spray this fragrance on my skin for a full wearing, so it dropped down the list quite a bit. We are talking about, surprisingly for some of you, Red Tobacco. Now, this is where the top 15 started in my top 15, but Cidrapoise and Intense Cidrapoise got split up. Spoiler, they were number one, now they're number one and two. So instead of them both being number one, because the top 15 was technically 16, everything kind of shifted down because I split the, the said Rapoise. So with that said, 16 is Vetiver Sensuel. Now we're getting into the previous video. So this is one of the better Vetiver fragrances to start with, in my opinion, especially when you know the mid-level, beginner-level niche tier. Uh, fresher, woody Vetiver, a little touch of smoke. It's not a real earthy Vetiver. Citruses and fruits, high-level versatility everyday wear regardless of what you're wearing or what the climate's like this fragrance will work with above average performance it's vetiver sensual number 15 one of the best freshies from the house it is sole d'italy sole d'italy however you would like to say it to me niche dolce gabbana light blue is it the same scent profile not exactly but I get the same feeling, the same vibe. They do the same job. I would want to wear them in the same settings. It's airy, it's citric, it's watery. It's a little musky. Touch of spice, but not all that much. It doesn't have the incense and the heavy pepper of Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue, so they don't smell the same, but they evoke the same feeling to me because Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue is one of my favorite fragrances of all time, very pivotal in my fragrance journey. This reminds me of it in many ways. It's so good. It's a very airy and light fragrance that does hang around for a long, long time. On a super hot day, few can do what Soleil Dietoli can do. 14 is one of their signature scents that does have a nice dose of rose. We're getting into some of those fresher fragrances that center around rose, but it's a nice peppered citric fragrance, nice and woodsy, but it does have a nice fresh rose. It's Midnight Gold, another one that's confusing. Midnight Gold, I would, you know, aside from the color of the bottle, having a goldish orangish hue and Midnight, no, nothing dark or nighttime about this. Fresh everyday wear for a guy that likes a little bit of fresh rose in his scent profiles. That's how I would describe this one. It's, it's so good, so underrated, big time. I'm probably one of the few that would rank it this high, but it just kind of works for me. I like florals, I like fresh, I like versatile, so I like Midnight Gold. Moving to 13, if there was such a thing as Cidrapoise Eau Fraiche, it would be Wild Fruits. Even though this came out long before Cidrapoise, it reminds me of that scent profile. If you were to take the leather and woods away from it, add more citrus, tone back the fruity sweetness a little bit and just make it more about citrus. You still get the black currant tart tartness and everything. Nice musk, soft woods. It's not heavy on the woods. A little bit of wood in here. Wild Fruits. I can't wait for the summertime to start spraying this one more because it is that good. I would highly encourage checking this one out. If you never thought twice of giving it a shot, you might be missing out. Not fruity sweet, much more fruity fresh. Talking about wild fruits. And at number 12, at one point, there was a time when this was my favorite fresh fragrance from the house. We're talking about wave musk. It's as the name indicates, it's aquatic, it's musky, but it's also fresh cut grass green, a lot of citrus, it's airy. It lingers, it doesn't wear heavy, but it lasts like it wears heavy, at least on my skin, it does. It's a fresh cut grass green aquatic that's also, it's a sea salt aquatic, it's grassy green, it's citric, and it's musky. It's kind of a few different fresh fragrance profiles wrapped into one. Some of his best work that again, not centered around florals, not centered around ouds and heavy sweet notes, it's actually Beautiful freshy from the brand. Again, we're talking about Wave Musk. Number 11, in many ways, I would consider this to be kind of like a niche reimagining of Aqua de Gio Profondo. Now, they don't smell exactly the same, but they kind of give off a similar vibe. We're talking about black gold. It's aquatic. It's based around violet. You have your florals. It's some earthy tones. It's, it's aquatic and citric. It's... Man, there's so much going on here. It's actually quite the nuanced, somewhat busy fragrance. But this one's special. I think this one's special. 
I wouldn't call it high level versatility, but in a professional setting, this is a separating factor for someone's wardrobe and attire. This is more than just the cherry on top, in my opinion. We are talking about Mancera's Black Gold. Number 10, if you want a freshy citrus fragrance with a nice dose of florals that just makes sense, masterfully composed, is Sicily Juicy Florals, Lang Lang, Rose, you name it. There's a bunch of different florals in here with citruses, fruits. It's airy and watery. Oh, man, it's this beautiful citrus floral with an aquatic undertone. This is so good. It does lean feminine, but damn it, I don't care. This is so good. I highly encourage you to check this out. If you are someone, man, woman, or child that likes florals, great performance. Doesn't smell like everything else. I don't have anything else that smells like Sicily. Please do yourself a favor and try Sicily. Moving into nine, there's other things going on, but for me, the most simplistic way to describe this is fresh cut lemons, soft woody tone, even though there's no real woody notes in here that I recall. It comes across a little woodsy to me, but fresh cut lemons with lemon lime. One of the best lemon heavy openings I've ever smelled and not a too candied of a lemon like lemon heads. More of a fresh cut, slightly acidic type of smell. Sharp, a little musky, it's bright and aromatic. Man, this is good. Another one that I'm, I'm happy to say is not centered around oud and heavy florals, a little bit of florals, but you don't get much of it. You know, it's beautiful. If you like lemon, you enjoy a good lemon note, a great lemon note, dare I say, please get your nose on lemon line. Number eight, in my opinion, one of the most versatile, easy, easily accessible scent profiles from the brand. This is Aqua Wood. Another one that's appropriately named. It's aquatic. It's woodsy. There's a fresh pear meets orange citric type of smell. So it's fruity, but more fruity fresh than it is fruity sweet. Little bit of incense. Some people like to relate it to Bulgari's Aqua Amara. If you take away that musky orange smell, it's not a musky orange smell. Um, it's more pleasing overall, honestly better in every way, but I do get the tie-in and the correlation that people get to that fragrance. It does resemble it some, uh, a good amount actually, but this is superior. It just is, and it performs great. It's super versatile, it's interesting. It nuances a bit, not the most complex fragrance, but it's really good stuff. It's aqua wood. Now number seven, I don't think too many people would rank this this high. But it just does something for me. It's a citrus aquatic, citrus fruity, rose heavy. So blue from Mancera. Very rose heavy. This is one of the main fragrances I refer to when I talk about their fresh fragrances based around rose. This is, the focal point is rose. It's a strong powdery rose nuance. Everything else is a supporting player. It's a phenomenal performer. It does lean feminine because it's all about the fresh rose. And I love so blue it's not just in the top 10 it's midway through the top 10 so again take what i'm saying with a grain of salt with all of these especially something like this a dangerous blind buy unless you're just a big fan of rose fragrances because it's not as blue as you would think it's a blue fragrance but it's a blue fragrance based around rose because everything else about it definitely pretty much a blue fragrance talking about man sarah's so blue now at number six, this is one of the most impressive iris fragrances I've ever smelled. It's iris, it's violet, it's rose, it's leather, it's a little earthy, it's smoky. It's, it smells like Mancera the Oud is the base of this fragrance. It's Black Prestigium, I mentioned it earlier. This is one of the most impressive fragrances I've ever smelled in my life, but it's crazy situational. I've never even given it a full wearing. Just test sprays, because I haven't had the right scenario come up to where I'm like, ooh, I'm wearing that. Hasn't happened yet. Might not happen for a long time. I don't know. I'll never even have the, the hope of finishing this bottle. But I'm glad I have the bottle because anytime I want to just give it a spray and enjoy it for myself, which I do all the time with fragrances you don't see in the week of rotation, I got it. It's got all of that funkiness of Mancera the Oud built upon greatly with all of these beautiful florals, most noticeably Iris. Rose comes out pretty well also, and a lot of leather, dense leather accord, kind of animalic, honestly. This is masterfully composed. This is some good stuff, not for everybody, kind of a challenge here. 
but beautiful nonetheless. It's Black Prestigium. Number five, one of the more fun fragrances, Tonka Cola. I love it. Man, I love it. The spice here, I've always said, smells like the carbonation for the Cherry Coke, because you do smell Cherry Coke here. It's a little powdery. It's sweet. It's very spicy and vibrant, bright spice at the top with that cola note, sour cherry, black cherry, whatever it is. A lot of cherry. I get a lot of cherry on, on my skin. This is a fun one. Fun night out, movies, bowling, dinner dates. Hell, I got a dinner date movie night with my wife day after tomorrow at the recording of this. I might go with this. I think I will go with this. I need to remember that. I'm going to go with this two nights from now. In the recording of this, I'm gonna wear this. So we got movie tickets and we're going to dinner. It's my high carb day. I get to eat. <laughs> Those of you didn't know I'm cutting right now, I get to eat the day I'm gonna wear this. But this is such a fun night out for a casual evening. Not the best like first date fragrance. I'm, it wouldn't be terrible, but such an evening vibe kind of thing. Not the best daytime choice, even in cooler weather. I mean, sure you can use it for that, but for me, fun night out. That's what this screams. It's Tonka Cola. Number four, the reason red tobacco plummeted down the list, intense red tobacco. Why is this so much better to me? Well, it mutes some of that pungent sweetness at the top, and this is more about leather, woods, and spice than anything else. Of course, you get the earthy tobacco, but this is a more refined fragrance. I think they named it incorrectly because the original is much more intense. It's stronger and it lasts longer, whereas this is still a beast. That's an absolute Godzilla-like monster for a fragrance. I would have named this something like Red Tobacco Privé. Something in those line, long, along those lines because it is a refined twist, more so than an intense twist. Intense, extreme, that's just terrible names for this fragrance in my opinion. I think it, it, a missed opportunity on naming it properly. But here we are, it's called Intense Red Tobacco. It is really that good. To me, it is anyways. Sample, super redundant to the other one because it is. it still smells like red tobacco, but it's a rebalancing of things. It's basically a reformulation where they change things around here. Top three tobacco in my entire collection. Entire collection of almost 2,000. It's like 18, 1,900 fragrances at this point. Top five tobacco. Don't just take my word for it. Get a sample. Intense red tobacco. Number three, I take full responsibility for the hype behind this fragrance in the online community. I'm not saying I'm the only one. I'm saying I'm the main one. The French Riviera. This is my jam. This is my vibe. This is my favorite fresh Mancera. This is one of my favorite fresh fragrances. This is 10 for life niche for me. I had need to revamp that this year. This is in it. And the funny thing about it is it's not some remarkably unique, oh my God, everybody should try it, scent profile. What it is, is a special feeling, vibe, wearing experience for me. It's how I feel when I wear it that makes me enjoy it so much. It's a laid back, coastal, casual summer day. It's citrus, it's watery, freshwater aquatic, not a saltwater aquatic. The tiari, tiara, I don't know how to say it, flower, floppy white, fl big floppy white flower. It's not super powdery. It's more of a creamy white floral than it is a little powdery, but and you have a nice musky tone to it. It's just such a laid back fragrance. And I'm here for it. I'm here for it. This is a me profile. This is such a me fragrance. I love this fragrance. As I record this, it's back in stock on Mancera's website for 180. If you were waiting to get it, there's your chance. If you wait a little longer, it'll probably hit discounters for a little over a hundred bucks again. That's what I did. I bought it from Fragrance Buy for like 110 early last year, and I've been in love with it ever since. Number three, French Riviera. So number one and two are obvious. I mentioned it earlier, but which one above the other since we're splitting them up? Number two is going to be Intense Cidrapoise. This is warmer. This is spicier. It's a bit more animalic. I get more leather from it. It's a suede leather specifically. It's absurdly strong. It's 40%. I go nose blind quick to this one. And then later, when it calms down a little bit, my nose will come back and it smells like I just sprayed it. It has maintains all that sharp lemon, fruity black currant smell. It still smells like the original and it smells appropriately named like an intense version. Intense red tobacco, not appropriately named. Intense Cidrapoise, appropriately named. For a lot of people, they would just prefer to get this one over the original because of the added performance, and it's a little denser. There's a little more going on. 
I get it. It smells phenomenal. Super redundant to the original. You don't need both. I wear them for different situations. That's why I'm thrilled to have both. But one of his best works of art, Intense the Drap Blase at number two. And then the number one, a top fiver in my collection. I think I bumped it to six recently, actually. But top ten in my entire collection. Number one from Mancera. The original Sidrap Waze. For me, it's just special. High level versatility. I like. I would take it over the Intense because it's a little bit fresher. It's a little bit more versatile. This is year round signature scent kind of stuff. I get above average performance. It is not a beast. I don't get weak performance like some people do. I don't get phenomenal performance like some do. I just get above average. Like seven, eight hours longevity. Pretty good projection for about two hours. Pretty good sillage. But phenomenal smell. One of the most versatile fragrances I've ever smelled. Citrus, fruit, smells like a wicker basket full of fruits is what I've always described it as because it's more of a dry, woody tone with a little bit of a supportive leather note. I don't get a lot of leather out of this one, but it's fresh, it's desirable. Date night, daytime, casual, work day, summer, winter, spring, fall, doesn't matter. It works. That's part of what makes it number one for me. So drap wasé. Well, that was 40, from 40 to one. Thank you everybody that stuck with me all the way through. I tried to be as quick as I could throughout. This video is not as long as I thought it would be, but it's still a long video, so I sure appreciate you so much. Until next time, do me a real quick favor, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, because I do appreciate all the feedback and I love hearing from you guys. What were some of the surprises for you in this ranking, and what are some that kind of piqued your interest? I will do my best to have links to everything down below. Until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of these 40 from Men Sarah and you give them a spray now, you might end up thanking me later. Who knows? Have a good one, guys.